So what's gotten me all excited about this carbon steel pan from OXO? Hi, I'm Jed. This is Cook Culture. So today I've got the carbon steel pan from OXO. It's relatively new. It is available in the US, not in Canada yet. Uh, but what it is, is a fairly lightweight, Chinese-made, pre-seasoned carbon steel pan. Nothing special. Comes with a nice, you know, signature good grips silicone handle like you would find on a lot of the good grips tools. Um, but what is really fantastic about this pan particularly is that OXO is a massive player in the kitchen gadget tool world. They make a huge range of different kitchen tools one of the biggest names and one of the biggest players in kitchen tools uh, in the world, uh, definitely in North America, owned by a big massive company that own other companies like it. Um, they are a company that makes money. That's what they're doing. They're supplying good. They are trying to sell the most to the most amount of people in the most amount of categories and the most amount of places. And they're not in the business of trying to change the world. They are not trying to promote carbon steel cookware because it's going to be better than something else and that we all need to you know, do something better for the planet. That's just not the type of business that they are. What they are are looking for opportunities of growth. And carbon steel has been really niche until now. You know, in whatever the brand happens to be, there's a lot of, of high quality brands on the market, but there's more and more Chinese made mediocre sort of brands, uh, that especially that you can find from Amazon. And this is no different than that. But what is really cool is that a company the size of Amazon now stepping into this category is saying something to where cooking is going to, pans in particularly, is that more and more people in, in maybe the tipping point of the great majority of people moving away from nonstick that want something that can last longer and OXO making a pan like this that should last forever, there's no reason why not, this is a change to me and this is a really awesome change. So I wanna see, is this good? Like, is this a pan that people should buy? You know, I don't have high expectations of this pan. I know that it's not like what I usually test and use on this uh, channel, uh, but I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see, is this something that somebody could easily go and spend 50 bucks on in Target uh, down in the US and use forever and be really happy with it. So I'm gonna take this uh, cardboard packaging off and we're gonna put this thing to the test. Okay, so I've washed the pan. I've read all of the instructions that come with it, um, which are, you know, okay. They're, they're somewhat detailed. Um, they talk about it having a protective layer of wax on it. So I gave it a really good scrub. Looks a lot the same as it did uh, before. So it's kind of ready to go. They've got a uh, seasoning on it. It's pretty hard coated. Um, you know, it looks like it was done in, in some sort of a factory under really perfect conditions. So it, it look, looks great. Um, and they say to clean it with salt, where I promote chainmail. I think it's gonna be the exact same. I clean this with chainmail and it hasn't done anything to the uh, pre-finished surface. So I've diced up a quarter onion and I'm going to bring it up to a medium heat and we're gonna see how this guy's cooks with, um, you know, maybe a teaspoon of oil. Okay, so these onions look fantastic. This pan has done a really, really, really nice job. Um, yeah, I, I, I got no complaints with this little pan right now. And uh, I was gonna do a fried egg test here uh, in a sec, but I thought, you know, I've got these onions here, and instead of putting them to waste, I'm going to do uh, scrambled eggs. So I got two eggs here. Yeah, those, tiny bit more grape seed oil. And in you go. Okay. So again, we're, you know, just a bit, just above medium here. Um, yeah. Oh, I need to put a little bit of salt in there. There's no seasoning.
Yeah, that pan works great. That is a, uh, you know, like, you could almost argue that this is a nonstick pan. Like, you know, this pan, it works beautifully well. It's, uh, yeah, you know, I, I haven't seasoned this at all from, from its original seasoning. Uh, and that is cooking a really nice scrambled egg. So I'll turn the power off on that. And we'll get our plate on there. Yeah, right, so there's our scrambled egg. And then over to the sink for a quick Okay, and there's the pan with a, I would say a three second wipeout. And that pan basically looks like it's new. So I'm pretty stoked with, uh, with how that's worked for onions and a quick scrambled egg. Uh, so now let's move on to a, a head to head test using a matte fur nine and a half inch carbon steel pan, uh, considerably heavier pan for sure. Uh, and we're gonna see how this guy goes against the mat for, for frying an egg. Okay, so pans are heated. Uh, this, the, the Good Grips pan definitely feels hotter than the Dubois pan, oh, sorry, into the mat for pan. Uh, I'm very used to saying Dubois or Mineral B. Uh, it feels quite a bit cooler, so that makes absolute sense. It's a thinner pan, it's heated up quickly, it's radiating heat fast, so it may not need the same amount of heat, preheat time, as something as heavy as this guy does. Um, but we'll see what happens here when we get some oil on the pans. Yeah, we got a bit of smoke happening on that guy already. So we're gonna get an egg on there. Not pretty. Let's see, that's a lot more me than, <laughs> than that guy. Um, not super pretty, but it is what it is. Um, you can see some decent lifting already coming out of this guy. So it's a little bit cool around the edge, hot in the middle. Um, that could be a little bit of the issue of a lighter pan, that it's not pulling the heat all the way through from the induction top. Um, you know, induction can be a, l a little bit questionable on exactly how it spreads its heat evenly, um, where gas, not that it's really better at spreading heat, but it will push it out further. Um, sometimes it's a little bit cooler in the middle. Uh, it just all depends on range by range, it's just how the gas comes out. Induction, for the most part, does kind of work from a center plate, and hopefully the pan takes the heat further out. So, got that guy cooking away. Yeah, it's a little bit light on the outside, but you know, it's it's moving around. Yeah, you know, it's it's doing very much the same job. Uh, I've got a little bit of browning going on there. So we'll go two sides up. Let's see, how am I doing on my flip? Oh, oh, not perfect. Not perfect. This guy? Oh, nope. Mm. Mm. Be alright going into a sandwich. All right. So we're going to throw that onto a plate. All right. So, you know, from a non-stickability, and from a heat standpoint, right? Like operator error a little bit here on the uh, on this guy. It would it would go perfectly into a sandwich. So for me, going into a like a breakfast sandwich, that would be totally fine that sometimes I either that's hanging out or trimmed off. Um, but like it's a little bit browner, a little bit browner 
on there. And if we move that guy a little bit, it's kind of hot still. So I guess I could have turned the heat down a tiny bit. Uh, but, you know, all in all, that was great. The nonstick ability, the cleanup of those guys, that performed beautifully. Okay, so now we're going to do something a little trickier. I'm going to take some chickpeas and I'm going to cook them uh, and caramelize them. So I'm going to introduce some sugar, some maple syrup into there and cook them down. Uh, I cook this as a snack for my kids quite often. I'll put them in their lunch and I'll take them for when they're cold and snack on them. So a little bit sweetened, a little bit of salt, um, and it kind of cooks the chickpeas, so it hardens them a little bit. So they're a nice little crunchy snack, uh, but it makes a hell of a mess in the pan. So I'm interested to see how much of a mess it makes and how the cleanup goes. So let's do that one. Okay, so we've been on here for seven, eight minutes and they're starting to get a little hard and crusty. Um, the the Good Grips pan definitely browns a tiny bit more. It's more even, consistent heating out of the Matford pan at the same heat, that is. I think that makes sense. I think that's, that's to be expected. So we're going to get in a little bit of uh, maple syrup in each one. So like a teaspoon in each. Just a slight coat. It's not a lot of sugar. Not a lot of syrup, but it makes a bit of a sticky mess. So that's why I like this kind of test here. You get a little bit of salt. These guys are super tasty. My idea of processed food. All right. So we'll let those now caramelize on there. Um, you know, I'm interested to find out what they do with this seasoning process from the factory on the Good Grips pan because it's working really, 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 really well. Um, out of the box, this thing is, is fantastic. Um, you know, I haven't seasoned this yet. I, I took the wrapper off, I cleaned it, and I've been using it. I haven't done any post-seasoning. Um, as of yet. I haven't done anything to thrash the pan yet, so I don't know what I'm going to do in that test. Um, we'll see. This one's pretty easy. It's really about just kind of making it sticky and what the cleanup is. I'm, and I'm starting to get a little bit of, of sticky on there, which I was looking forward to. So we're going to leave this for a few more minutes, let this cook right down, and then we're going to finish it with a little bit of nutritional yeast. And then those of that will cool and be a snack for later on, but we'll see what the pan kind of shape is between the two and what kind of cleanup they take. Okay, so I walked away for a few minutes and got a little bit of charring in there. More even uh, in the mat for, for sure. So, you know, probably same result. I could have done this uh, on lower heat. I was trying to do things equally. So I brought that down to a, uh, uh, to, to off. So those guys are done now. And those guys are just gonna cool off. And I've got a, bowl, get those guys into. So that handle is warmish. This handle is totally cool. It's quite nice on there. And then uh, we get a little bit of nutritional yeast on there. Nutritional yeast for anybody who hasn't had it, it tastes like cheese, like Parmesan cheese. So this would be like putting Parmesan on, on here. And then uh, those are just gonna sit aside and cool and they're a yummy little snack. Okay, so those two pans, we've got a little bit of burning on here and we've got uh, just some sticking on here. So I'm gonna take them to give them a, a quick wipe down with the chain mail in the sink and then bring them back here. Okay, so those pans are in both good shape. Maybe a tiny bit of staining on there, but in great shape. I use chain mail, of course, just to wipe those out, no soap, uh, and they're in great shape. So those both responded wonderfully, uh, as expected, and that's a great response for the uh, Good Grips pan. So one more test. 
I want to kind of cook down some starchiness now. So I'm going to make some hash browns. I'm going to chop up some potato and we're going to put in hash brown and see if some starchiness is going to do anything to either one of these two pans. So here we go. Okay, so cook those guys thoroughly. I'm stopping here because I wouldn't want to cook the hash browns in the OXO pan anymore. Um, I did them in a six, which I think is fair. Um, maybe I could have cooked them a little bit lighter, but they've browned really nicely. Just, they've tend, ended up being different, right? This is definitely nowhere near as browned. Uh, I'm going to try one and see. So, one of the, uh, one from the mat for pen. Okay, it's cooked. Tastes like a hash brown. Yeah. One, let's see, that guy there. Well, that's hot. Oh, yeah. That also tastes like a hash brown. So, not surprised that I made hash browns and they taste like hash browns. But, you know, under, I, I, to be fair, I could have cooked these at a five. Maybe it would have taken a little bit longer. They would have been more lightly finished like these guys here in the matte fur pan. Um, they're, they're a little overly brown. I don't mind either. I, you know, a little bit more browning. It's not a big deal. Um, so I would say they're done nicely. Just different results. A thicker pan. Everything goes a little bit slower. Um, they're cooked through. It's not like these guys are undercooked and these guys are overcooked. They're cooked around the same. Just more browning on the outside. So more direct, hard heat coming through the Good Grips pan um, to, to create more of that brown. So I would to cook even more thoroughly, if they were sort of thicker, I would have had to go lower or I would have had too much on the outside and not enough on the inside. But I've made the hash brown small enough that they were able to cook through. Um, and that, that's worked out really well. So that experiment has been excellent. So I need to do one last one. Just, just to kind of put this to bed for me. Just, I'm really, really enjoying this Good Grips pan. I think it's working really well, but I'm gonna make a crepe and see how it releases. I know what's gonna happen in the Matt Fur pan. I've used this pan, type of pan, making a thousand crepes, maybe 10,000 crepes, a lot of crepes. My kids really enjoy them. Um, but the thinness of this Good Grips pan, you know, so far, I guess why I'm wanting to do a crepe is I haven't found something that, that hasn't worked out really well. This has been an excellent experiment. I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, so I'm, I'm looking for where's that stress point? Where's something that it, maybe it doesn't do that as well as, as a, a Matt for pen or a, a Dubai or a Dubai Mineral B. Uh, so let's, uh, let's move into a crepe. Here we go. Okay, crepe. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of oil in each pan. And I haven't washed them that well. So there's a little tiny bit of texture from making the um, hash pounds. So we'll see how that ends up going with those guys. Again, preheated at six for both. The uh, Good Grips pan is a little bit hotter. So we're gonna see how that ends up going. Bad. Okay, and get that guy on and cook. Okay, so you know, it's doing its thing, it's acting as it's supposed to. So a pen that has a thinner edge is always a lot easier. Um, I mean, like a like a grill pan or a griddle pan. But this guy is doing his thing. Get underneath it here. So this is a little bit awkward just because of the shape of the pan. But uh, it's working just fine. Okay. Okay, so it's doing a great job. You know, like you can see the two of them are looking very, very similar.
you know, this here is all operator error, um, but they're, they're looking great. So, you know, I don't see any difference between these two pans for this and even at the same temperature. Um, so, you know, not any extra browning, not any extra cooking. Um, they turned out, uh, or turning out just fine. So you don't need nearly as much time on the back side. Yep. Yeah, those two crepes are working out just fine. Okay, so I would, uh, I would definitely give that one a pass. So uh, every test so far has been good. So let's summarize this. Okay, so there we go. These two pans head-to-head uh, -head have been fantastic to, to compare. So a heavier, more expensive pan from the Matfer, um, not as widely available, where you're gonna find that being a Good Grips product, an OXO product, this is gonna end up being everywhere probably that Good Grips is sold. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy with it. You know, the one tiny difference here is that you've got riveted handles on one and not on the other. That's not a big deal. Um, you know, I just finished these two crepes. You can't even tell which one is from which pan. So I've got to say that I'm, I, I had low expectations. I, I, but I'm very, very impressed with this pan. Um, full disclaimer, I sell OXO. I, I am a retailer of the brand, but I don't sell this pan because it's not available in Canada. I actually saw it somewhere at some point in time and I reached out to OXO and I'm like, hey, can I get one of those? Can you send me one? Because I want to try that. And they sent me this pan, so I didn't pay for this pan, but they sent it to me. Um, but no expectations. They're just like, yeah, sure, here you go. Uh, and uh, I'm, you know, I, I don't sell it, so it's not like I'm trying to promote it or to, to sell it. If I could sell it, I would definitely sell this pan, but I would sell this pan because I would love to sell this pan to people. I think this is a tremendous pan uh, for, for what it's doing. You know, I still do like the weight of this pan. Um, I, I appreciate the way in which it's made. I like that it's a little more splayed in its shape. Um, it, it's got a, a little bit of a, of, a, of a better finish like when you saw with the hash browns, I, I like that sort of more even consistent. You're not heating so fast. Uh, so I would definitely still reach for the mat fur for, for a heavier pan because I like the time that it takes to cook things more evenly and a little bit more thoroughly, um, like a slower, I guess what I'm getting at. Like you, you, will, you have more of a buffer when you're using a heavier pan. Things aren't happening so quickly. Uh, but that said, this was not a crazy fast pan. This did not happen ridiculously fast. When I cooked, you know, with an egg in it, when I cooked a crepe in it, it wasn't, and at the same temperature, things weren't going incredibly quickly. Uh, I did a video quite a while ago that compared this pan, the Dubai pan, and the Movial pan, and I found the Movial in the carbon steel was very thin and light, and it cooked very, very quickly. So you had to be way more on top of things to control what you were cooking, where, this guy gives you a, the, the, the Movial, sorry, the Debayer and the Matt Fur give you a lot of time to think about what you're doing. And you don't have to go so incredibly quickly in the kitchen. And I'm finding, you know, the, the Good Grips one is giving you enough time. You know, it's a little bit faster, but nothing like I said, the, the Movial pan. So all in all, I am really excited about this pan. If you need one and it's available to you and you can just walk into a local retailer and grab one off the shelf, uh, it's, this is a great pan. I find that using this right out of the package has been excellent. I still haven't even post seasoned this. Um, it's starting to get a little bit of, of uh, color discoloration on the surface, which is to be expected. So it starts being kind of a gray black color uh, and it's kind of getting even darker brown. I'll give it a scrub with the chain mail, uh, but generally I think that this pan is going to take a ton of abuse. I think it's going to stand up incredibly well. Um, they do recommend that if you're going to broil on it, you can take the silicone handle off of it. The silicone handle will take quite a bit of abuse with heat in the oven, but it doesn't want to be broiled with. Um, I don't broil, so that's not a problem to me. I could put that entire pan directly into the oven. Uh, so if you ever found that you wanted to, to season it again or like give it a full scrubbing and seasoning. You could strip it whatever way you decide to strip your seasoning and you could season this in the oven, which is really, really nice. So I can't say enough about it. I'm, I'm overwhelmed, excited because my expectations were so low. I love being surprised by cookware when I'm like, eh, this is gonna be okay. 
and I really thought that the map for Pam was going to kind of show it up in every test, but it didn't. So there we go. I hope that has been helpful. Another fantastic example of a carbon steel pan that you can get easily, easy access to, easy to use, easy to maintain, and no reason to buy nonstick cookware. So thanks so much. Take care.